Hey guys, welcome back to a new video by Banji with Zhang Xuan. So today we are going to attempt the Cambridge IGCSE Biology Paper 6 Alternative to Practical, the 0610 Paper 6 Variant 2, the May-June 2024 series. So if you have any questions regarding about this paper, feel free to comment down in the comment section below. I will have, as usual, reply to you as soon as, soon as possible. Alright, so let's start off with this video today. So question one, a student investigated the effect of acid concentration on the rate of diffusion in agar jelly. The student was given three test tubes containing bromothymol blue indicator in an agar jelly. Bromothymol blue is a blue indicator that turns yellow in the presence of an acid. Okay, let's start off by understanding the question. Let's find out like what is the IV, what is the DV, and what are the extra clues that have been provided. They say that the student is investigating the effect of acid concentration. So they say effect of acid concentration. So this is the IV, meaning the acid will be changing in its concentration uh, depending on each step of the investigation and it wants to see how does the acid concentration changing affects the rate of diffusion in agar jelly so this is the dependent variable this is what you are trying to measure then they tell you that they there are three test tubes containing bromothymol blue okay which turns yellow in the presence of an acid so this is another clue that shows you that it has turned yellow at a certain uh, period when it becomes acidic, for example. So you can have a read of the steps here, take some time to digest, and now they have asked you to, to complete table 1.1 by calculating the final volume of the solution in beaker A2. Write your answer in table A, uh, table 1.1. So for the, this question, the answer is 20. Why is it 20? Look at here. We look at step 3 and step 4. Okay. So, they have put 2 cm cube into A2. Meaning, here, I have 2 cm cube of HCl. And I add 18 cm of distilled water. So This is 2, this is 18. You total up, you're going to get 20. So the answer for this is 20. Okay, now you read for the rest of the question. They have used the syringe to transfer 10 cm cube of HCl into the test tube and they put into a water bath at 35 degrees. So all of them, three test tubes are placed at 35 degrees standard. And then uh, start a stop clock and leave the test tube water bath for 20 minutes. So it's the same for the rest of it. And then they measure the temperature. Now, Part 2, they ask you to measure the height of the yellow agar jelly in each test tube shown in figure 1.1. So they are pointing at this. So they've asked you to measure using a ruler, of course. So prepare a table and record your results of the investigation. Include in your table your measurements uh, in from figure 1.1, the final concentration of HCl. So you must have your concentration. Your units is very important. You must have this, the height, and also the unit. So you can add your values in. Make sure the decimal points are constant for each of it. Don't have one uh, and 0 0.10. So all of a sudden, let's have 1.00, 0 0.10. 0 .10, and that will be a better flow of it. So uh, just make sure that your values when you measure using your ruler is correct from the yellow agar jelly here and you should get uh, 4 marks for this question. Okay. So part 3. State a conclusion for the investigation. So the investigation you always refer is back to this part again. So what can you realize is that when the concentration of the hydrochloric acid increases, you can see as the value increases, the concentration, the rate of diffusion also increases. All right, so this is the final answer. Part four, identify the independent variable and the dependent variable of this investigation. So the independent variable, as we mentioned, is the concentration of the HCl solution, or you can say concentration of the acid. That's also acceptable. 
Dependent variable is to measure either the rate of diffusion or more accurately is the height of the yellow agar because this is the one that is playing a different role when the change in concentration uh, happens. Okay, so now let's look at part 5. Figure 1.2 shows the reading on the thermometer in step 40. Record the temperature of the water in the water bath at the end of the investigation shown in figure 1.2. So the answer here is 23. So this is 1, 2, this is 3. So the answer is 23. Part 6. The student stated the change in the temperature of the water bath was not a significant source of error in this investigation. Explain why the student was correct to state this. Because the moment you change the temperature, right? Like you say that from 20 to 30 or 30 to 40. What happens is that it's not one of the test tube changing. It's all of them are changing together because you are keeping them constant. The constant variable is the temperature of the water bath. So that is the reason why the student is correct to state this is because it will equally affect all three test tubes in this investigation. So part six, uh, part seven, suggest a control experiment for this investigation. Every time you see the term control, they want you to do something that re requires substitution of um, the things, the IV that you add. For, for this case, it will be the acid that we use, right? So the control is by taking out the acid and substitute with water and you see how water can take place in this investigation. Is acid really the main factor that contributes to the change or contributes to the dependent variable later on? So that's why the answer is use water instead of acid. Part 8. The student repeated the investigation but left the test tube in the water bath for 30 minutes instead of 20 minutes. Suggest how the result for this second investigation would differ from the results for the first. Of course, when you leave it longer, you didn't keep it constant, what happens is that the height of the yellow agar would continue to increase. Okay, so this is your final answer. So part B, in an experiment, a student cut different size cubes of agar, okay, containing bromothymol blue indicator. The student placed the cubes in the hydrochloric acid and measured the time taken for each of the cubes to become yellow. The results are shown. So you can see that for the answer, complete table 1.2 to calculate the volume of 4 mm cube. So the answer is 64. Okay, so how are you going to get this answer? It's just by, you say it's a cube. So does each side, um, it's like for example, the each side is 2. The If it's volume, it will be the length, the width and the height could be 2 times 2 times 2. For this case, it will be 4 times 4 times 4. So the answer is 64. Okay, simple mathematics. Now, they asked you to plot a line graph on the grid of the length of the cube sides against the time taken for the cubes to become yellow. So you can um, plot this graph out and the line, right, how is it going to look like? For this graph, it can also be drawn in either this line graph, okay, uh, by connecting the dots by a straight line like that, like the one that I've drawn here because it says it's a line graph. And if it's a, this of course looks like a curved graph. At first, it does look like the shape of a curved graph, but the question says it wants a line graph. So you just plot as it is, okay? So part three, use your graph to estimate the time taken for a cube with a side of length 3 mm to become yellow. Show on your graph how you obtain your answer. So here is the black line that I've indicated here. So it's about 49 seconds, okay? And state two variables that would have been kept constant in this investigation. So there's a ton of answers for this. We have temperature, concentration of acid, volume of acid, type of acid, type of agar, concentration of agar, concentration of the indicator, uh, what else and the volume of indicator type of indicator these are all constant variables to have to make sure that it's the same throughout the course of this investigation now question two 
When a seed germinates, it grows into a seedling. Figure 2.1 is a photograph of a seedling and they asked you to make a large drawing on this. So same as any paper sticks, you will expect one um, large drawing specimen uh, question. So this is how it's going to look like. It's not going to look as, as accurate as you draw on paper, but this is something like this. So how are you going to make sure that you're going to get your marks? It's just to make sure that you have a single clear unbroken line, like you don't have lines like this cut off in the middle so you don't have this. Uh, size is greater than half of the space provided so just make sure you use the size as much as possible. And the proportion of the plumule and the radical, so make sure your this is about, uh, is proportionate with the size of this. And then the two outermost curved leaves are drawn, this one and this one are drawn. And that's it for this question. Part 2. Line AB represents the width of the seedling. Measure the length of line AB on figure 2.1. So the length of the AB will be about 31 millimeters. And now you calculate the magnification is by using image over actual length. So you get 31 divided by 9 and you're going to get times 3.4 because they want in two significant figures. So the answer is magnification of 3.4. Now part 3, figure 2.2 shows photographs of two different seedlings P and Q. So they ask you to describe one visible similarity and two visible differences between seedling P and seedling Q in figure 2.2. So in similarity 1, you can see that there are roots in both. So you can just mention that roots are present. The difference in the first one is that P has a darker seed coat than Q. Okay, or you can say that P has leaves, okay, but for Q, there is no leaves present. Okay, so this is how simple you can go with your observation of the differences and the similarities. Part B, as seedling grows, they change starch into reducing sugar. Describe the methods you will use to test the sample of seedlings of starch and reducing sugar. For starch test, you just add iodine solution and then you can observe the result, whether it turns to blue-black later on. Reducing sugar test, you use Benedict solution and you make sure you have the term heat because they want you to describe the methods. So for Benedict uh, or the reducing sugar test, you must have the term heat. Okay, so this is how you're going to get your marks. And lastly, we have uh, this question, when light shines from one side, Seedling grows towards the light, so you can see that this is going to be a light intensity um, experiment question. Figure 2.3 shows a diagram of a seedling growing towards a light source. The angle of growth sh is shown in the diagram. So plan an investigation, use the I don't care really so run away method. So you just make sure that you state your IV. Your IV, you know it's different light intensity. It's all about shining. Like for example, this is the sample you make sure that you have something that is a light, okay? Place how many meters away, or yeah, how many meters or cent how many centimeters away from the plant source itself. So this is how you're going to do for your IV. And your CV is a type of plant with the wind speed. The temperature of the surrounding has to be kept constant. And the method, you can see a different lamp distance are used. 10 cm, 20 cm from the source or the plant itself. Repeat investigation twice and of course when you're sourcing a plant from somewhere, you're definitely going to use scissors to cut. So make sure that you use uh, the scissors carefully and not cutting your fingers by accident. So this is how you're going to score for these 6 marks. It's going to be very easy. 1 mark from here, you can get 2 or 3 marks from correct answer in the CV. 1 mark, okay, or maybe 2 sometimes. Uh, one mark and one mark and you're going to get six marks very quickly for this question so that's it for this paper thank you so much for watching see you guys in the next video bye bye